Hello, hello. So this right here is the affidavit of Sherry Saxon um, saying that Continental Communities is not a company. And I'll get to it right here. Continental Communities is not a registered company in Illinois, Minnesota, or Delaware. Same thing with the LLC spelt like that. And like that. Only with the comma dot LLC with the periods in between. Okay. They've admitted to running the website. They've admitted that Wendy Sonier does not work for any other entity other than Valley Green. Out of the permits that I have, which is over 40, uh, she signed all of them as a representative from Continental Community Sales 2, which I can easily pull up here. The permits. And the front page of each of them. Okay. She signed... She signed, but she doesn't work for them. Okay. Now, on top of that, even after the judge came back and said they're not a, a registered entity in Minnesota, they're still sending out letters as a company. So I don't know how a non-company can send out letters as a company pretending to be a company I thought that's sort of against the law. Well, because it is. Um, here's what the judge said. That Continental Communities uh, is not registered with the Secretary of State. Okay, to do business in the state. According to their website, Continental Communities, right there. I'm just going to show you which places they own in Minnesota. We have Cottage Grove. We have Flamingo Terrace and Ham Lake. That's the one that they recently expanded. Where the lady who says that they're not a company, Sherry Saxon, this lady right here, also submitted stuff to the Star Tribune. There's a Star Tribune article about it. As if they're a company. Pepin Woods in Red Wing. South Haven in Mankato. University Park in Mankato. Summit Park in St. Peter in Valley Green and Jordan. But this company gets real interesting. Their holdings company, Continental Communities Holdings, LLC, they went ahead and they registered in December of 2003 a really interesting guy to sell their securities. Okay. And that guy's name is Mr. Robert Lund of Lund Partners Securities. Right there, Lund Partners Securities. And they admitted to having been involved with him, just that it doesn't affect what they're doing currently because it was a long time ago. But it goes to show their, uh, the way that they work because Bob One is famous for defrauding Scotty Pippen. Wow. Are you serious? And if we go to this article about Scotty Pippen, I'm going to go in and put in Continental. For at least a time, Lund's touch was golden. An investment he regularly cites as evidence of his acumen is Continental Community Holdings. And in time, Pippin owned equity in Continental Community Holdings. Okay. But they're, the way that they run is they're not a legal company. They haven't registered with the states that they do business as Continental Communities since their inception. When was their inception? Let's come on over back over here to their own website and look at it in their own words. It was in... 1997. This non-company claims to own and have wholly owned subsidiaries as these companies down here. You can go right on their website. It's right there. Really interesting thing is though, if you go over to their leadership, 
And there's their CEO and founder and president. Their vice president of sales and operate or operations and sales of their senior vice president is Sherry Saxon. Who do you contact if you want to work there? You contact Sherry Saxon. They have a position available for a mortgage loan originator. I thought that was through Chartwell. I guess Chartwell is Continental. Right here, under the contact for career information, contact Sherry Saxon. Okay, but by 2003, by late 2003, uh, people were fleeing Mr. Lund. Right here. Okay, by the end of 2003, says the Lund creditor, that the people Bob could go to to raise money were drying up. Nobody trusted him anymore. Except for Daniel Von Horace by having him hop on his SEC holdings. And uh, selling those puppies. Man, it was during the time that everybody was fleeing him and that his bad stuff was known. That's quite interesting. Over here is something that they submitted to the town of Mountain Village, Colorado. It sort of lays out everything of how they operate. Some of it's real interesting. It's on page 249. Okay, and it starts off with this. It's the same website we were just looking at, and it claims that Continental Communities Holdings LLC, along with all of its affiliated and wholly owned entities, is Continental Communities. It's a name they use throughout the rest of this. It tells you how they operate, but it gets real interesting when you get down here. These are all the properties that they've bought and sold and you get to the financial resources and relationship all of these banks down here they claim to have hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars in private equity and institutional equity uh, for a company that's not registered that's sort of interesting that means they're not a legal company so not a legal company has <laughs> gotten funding from all these guys Pretty sure most of these guys are federally backed too, right? That's my mortgage got sold off to uh, Bank of America. This one right here. So Bank of America is a federally backed bank, and it requires flood insurance. My home is in the floodplain. It's never installed up to the floodplain. I found that out when I went to go sell the place, and I wasn't going to screw anybody over by selling them a home that wasn't wasn't correct. So I was trying to get it fixed. And uh, the problem that I had was this. The city of Jordan has not been enforcing the codes down there for quite some time. Even frost up footings. They claim that they were there. They refused to inspect, which an inspection is required in order for the tenants to be able to take the landlord to, to issue. And it requires a state inspector, a code inspector. Okay, these are basic things. Well, this guy, Tom Nukin, he's the one that uh, applied for this grant. This is for their, their flood control grant that they did with the DNR. And if you scroll on down, in here it gets quite interesting. Okay, talks about the flooding that's happened. And down here, it says that there's a total of 261 structures in the AE uh, floodplain that would be removed by this. This number includes 138 mobile homes that have been repeatedly flooded but are not eligible for flood insurance since they are not permanently anchored to foundations. That is a straight up lie. They are eligible for the National Flood Insurance Program. You have to install them legally. They have to be legally installed. In fact, if they're not legally installed, you cannot tax them. That makes them non-taxable. But the city of Jordan 
and Scott County have been taxing them without representation and without them being legally installed. Okay, here's the floodplain management uh, PowerPoint. This is from the DNR, right? And from the, the Minnesota state. And it goes through in here what all you need to do, what all the requirements are, why we do this. Okay, it, it tells you why, it tells you how, everything else. Okay, I'm going to go to Manufactured Homes. I'm going to search that up on here. Okay, requirement. New and substantially improved homes, meaning over 50% of their value. And Manufactured Homes uh, to, to be elevated above the regulatory floodplain which is your base flood elevation plus 1 to 1 1.5 feet. But the city of Jordan just doesn't do that. Okay, will they be anchored properly? Okay, then it goes into here. It shows you exactly what you need to do. This is why I didn't want them to give this the Valley Green the conditional use permit to just install them using more blocks because you actually have to have to have to have an engineered plan okay on resisting flood uh the, the water flow stuff like that based on the flow rate based on the amount of water going through that's where you get the type of piers you're supposed to have single block double block whether or not it's filled there's laws okay this isn't just me making up stuff there are laws uh you have to elevate the equipment Okay, and uh, there, there, there's obviously stuff there, okay? Okay, certificates of occupancy. That's what I'm going to go in first on this, and then we'll get into the manufactured home stuff. Now, this, this right here is the code administration manual put out by the state of Minnesota, and it's sort of like how you administer the codes that's what it is a manual on how to administer the codes here's some stamps okay certificate of occupancy it's example permit okay is required before the building is occupied certificate of occupancy requirements right here this includes new manufactured homes exception Municipality has the option of requiring a certificate of occupancy for Group U occupancies in used manufactured homes. City of Jordan, Code 154.125, Section J, states that it has to have it for all of them. So in their own <laughs> city code, they, they did not choose to do the uh, used manufactured homes being exempt. While you make up a law, you have to follow the law that you just made. And then if you go down on here, it even has an example, okay? It's separate from the permit. A permit is not this. They sent me an email back showing me my permit again saying it's a certificate of occupancy. No, it's not. It gives you the codes that uh, it was under. So that way if it's grandfathered in, you can go look up those codes and make sure it's in conformance with those codes. You know what codes to build off of for the future. Uh, the type of occupancy, the owner's name, any conditions, uh, that type of thing uh the maximum number of people that uh for the bigger buildings are like apartments in that i think that there's there's laws behind this stuff okay and then next is the manufactured home code rules and the chronology of it okay the requirements like there's laws these are the laws the state puts them out the city of jordan's like we just don't do that yes you do i mean is what a permits are required for uh a lot of that they haven't been doing and if they have been they've been just falsifying some of the data grandfathering in the federally required data 24 cfr 3285 is how the manuals for the installation of the homes are are made and even on the state forms it shows that you have to be in conformance with that part of that is 
the soil data. You can't just grandfather in soil data, the footings. There, there's like big laws based on that. And even in the manufacturer's installation guide, it says that the uh, foundation or the installation of the home is the single most important thing for the safety of the home. Okay. This is the new permit for the plan review. The city of Jordan's not using this. I sent this to them. This is the new version. Okay, I sent them all the new versions. They still have the old versions up on their website and are not using the new versions. Uh, so they're using outdated forms that have outdated information on them. Here's a sample permit. I mean, they, they give you everything, what's required. Okay, a site plan survey with two copies. Yes, they do this. They can't grandfather in the site plan survey. Okay, plans instructions. You have to have two copies. The contractor's license number. There's three permits, and I can give you their, their numbers. 88-19, 89-19, and 90-19. Four of the permits for the city of Jordan. The installer, M3 Structure Services, doing business as Rightway Mobile Home Services. They had, and I'm just going to go to the CCLD's website, and you can see this for yourself. Uh, license lookup. They let their uh, license expire in Minnesota, and they let it expire for, uh, which is April of two thousand and eighteen. But yet, in 2019, they were doing permits under the same permit number. So they weren't licensed. So an unlicensed installer installing homes. And there was also permits from 2015 that were never finaled. And that would be real easy to show real quick while we're waiting here. Um, I just have to find which house it was. 145, I believe. And if you scroll down on here, expired. There's even a cool little note about the other ones. Look, these homes all were expired. The permits expired, but people are able to live there. That's not, not totally cool. And I'm going to go ahead and just pull up those permits that I was talking about. The ones from 2019. Yep, these three right here. 88, 89, and 90. Okay. M3 Structured Services, doing business as right way mobile home services. Okay. The effective date that it was terminated is 4 1 2018. But again, on here, this is the city's job. Yeah, they're supposed to, like, make sure the contractor has a license. So this isn't just, like, small things that I'm talking about. It's, like, pretty big stuff, right, to keep people from being defrauded. But it goes through more on the manufactured homes. I'm basically going to leave it there for now, for today. But we need to enforce the laws equally and fairly. I thought that was, like, the Constitution, you know. And let's just look it up. Okay. Equal justice under the law within the state of Minnesota. Okay. Resources devoted to civil rights enforcement. Okay, Minnesota does have the statutes based on it. Quality of enforcement. No, let's go with um, the Constitution. U.S. Constitution. Yeah, the 14th Amendment. Okay. 
it has nor deny any person with its, in its jurisdiction equal protection underneath the laws. This is like some constitutional stuff. That's what makes me so upset about it, and that's the reason I'm not going to give up on it. The laws need to be enforced, and you need to be enforced fairly and equally. 